A few years ago, I had zero coding experience. Today, I build blockchain applications for a living. If you're wondering how to go from complete beginner to Web3 developer, this is exactly how I did it and how you can too. The first thing you're gonna do is start with the fundamentals. Like I said, I had no coding experience, so I started by learning web development through a coding bootcamp. Now the coding bootcamp structured my learning a little bit and accelerated my progress, but especially today, you don't need to do that. Today with all the AI tools we have available like ChatGPT and Claude, you can learn web development fundamentals using AI much more quickly. If you wanna go to a coding bootcamp, that's up to you, that's great. But I would say it's definitely not required to learn web development fundamentals in 2025. You could probably go to ChatGPT right now and type in, I've never written a line of code before in my life. What's the very first thing I need to do to learn web development? And it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to get started. That wasn't something we had back seven years ago when I went to coding bootcamp. Of course we had Google, but you had to know where to look and what to look for and how to separate good information from bad. Today, there's a wealth of information, even YouTube videos, such as this one, online courses, some of my other videos where I do tutorial walkthroughs. There's so many ways to get a core understanding of basic web dev. Once you understand understand that, then you can start learning blockchain fundamentals. Becoming a developer is going to be much easier if you learn web development fundamentals first and then learn the core basics of blockchain on top of that. At least being able to build basic TypeScript and Node.js applications will set you up to be able to create applications for the web that users can interact with. You'll be able to integrate with Web3 packages that are designed to work with JavaScript and TypeScript into these projects that you're building. Speaking of projects, the second thing that you're going to do is build real projects and build them in public. The moment you start building dApps, decentralized applications, you're a blockchain developer, whether you have imposter syndrome or not. If you're building blockchain apps, you are a blockchain developer and no one can tell you that you're not. Sharing my projects and my journey on YouTube early on helped me to build connections and get feedback. If you want, you can also do hackathons. For me personally, those are just not so much my thing. I don't like feeling rushed with projects. I prefer to just work on my own schedule and my own time, but I know people who have had huge success with hackathons. In fact, I knew one girl who was an engineer at Amazon and she actually quit her job there to go full-time just traveling around the world doing web3 hackathons for a while. She ended up winning like six or seven major hackathons at various Ethereum conventions around the world. And she got paid out lots of prize money for doing that as well as attention from companies in the web3 space who were interested in hiring her. So if that's your thing, hackathons can absolutely be a great route to go as well. The third thing that you're gonna do is network on social media and get involved with the web3 community. This is how I got my first job as a blockchain developer. I was still a coding bootcamp student Student, but I started sharing my journey on Twitter, now X, and that was how I got connected with the founder who gave me my first internship as a developer working at a crypto startup. My story on that actually made its way into a Business Insider article, so I'll link that below if you want to check it out. But the power of building meaningful connections with other builders and attending conventions cannot be overstated. Not only did my connection through social media lead me to my first job, but they've also brought me freelance gigs and even grant-funded research in the blockchain space. If you want to, you can create social media accounts specific to your work as a developer. Developer. That's what I do on TikTok, for example. I have my Software Sarah account on TikTok, which is separate from my personal account. That way, if you don't want to feel like you're spamming your friends with a bunch of tech content that they don't care about, you can keep it separate. But my biggest piece of advice would be to make sure that regardless of where you're posting, that your content is real and valuable. Don't set up an AI agent to spam a bunch of posts on X about Web3 and auto reply to a bunch of different accounts. People can spot that from a mile away. It's not going to get you anywhere. Take the time to have that human to human interaction. In a world where everything's increasingly overflowing with AI generated garbage, the human element is what's going to stand out. In fact, I think this gives you a big opportunity to gain an advantage by being human oriented and being willing to put your face with the work you're doing. Web3 kind of got started with this Anon culture and that can be cool, but I think increasingly people are seeking out real personality because they want to know that they can put trust in the product or in the builder who's going to be building their product. The important takeaway here is that you still don't need a computer science degree or prior coding experience to become a blockchain developer. If you start learning and building, you're already a builder and no one can tell you that you're not. And guess what? Opportunities will come. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.